in a power plant outside town. Employees are celebrating a co-worker's birthday when they suddenly see something strange on the security cameras. There's a shadow moving in the shaft and a worker goes to check it out, only to suddenly be attacked by a mysterious monster. The guy tries to return to the office but a bunch of beasts follow him and start killing everyone in the building. As an eclipse hides the sun, the creatures begin appearing all over the planet, killing millions of people and destroying cities. The news calls it Judgment Day as soldiers are sent to fight these monsters in a war that lasts the entire eclipse. Millions of lives and tons of resources are lost in the fight, but eventually all the creatures are exterminated, and humanity begins to rebuild. They design protective installations known as gates just in case the creatures decide to ever come back. Fifteen years pass and the world is living through a normal routine again. Dave is working as a janitor for a company that doesn't pay him well even when he has to enter the shafts to get rid of dead animals. At the local school, Laura works as a teacher and befriends fellow teacher Milton, who keeps asking her out on a date. Laura divorced Dave ages ago and is still working on some issues, but today she finally accepts Milton's invitation. Meanwhile her son Tyler is meeting with his girlfriend Maddie, who is worried about the upcoming eclipse. Tyler tells her there's nothing to worry about because there have been many eclipses in the last 15 years and nothing happened. Meanwhile Officer Garrett is called by the personnel from one of the gates, asking him to come over because they've confirmed major seismic activity and containment has been approved. When Garrett arrives at the gate, he gets the feeling that this time it isn't a drill. He checks on all the systems, only for a power box to explode, causing them to lose a whole grid. In the city, Dave goes to pick up Tyler at Laura's house, and while the boy plays video games, the parents end up arguing. It turns out Laura had been pregnant with Tyler during the last disaster and Dave hadn't been there for her, and she hasn't forgiven him yet. Tyler interrupts them and gets to leave with his dad. Later in the middle of the night, Dave gets a call from Uncle Ted, who is sure that the new Judgment Day will be tomorrow and invites Dave to bring his family to his shelter before the eclipse begins. Tyler is watching the news and is disturbed to see that millions of dead fish are appearing on beaches everywhere. This is one of the signs that was seen 15 years ago. At that moment, the first monster appears at the gate, quietly sneaking up the stairs. At the same time, Laura calls Dave, saying that she's seen the news and wants Tyler to come home because Milton has reserved a shelter. Dave wants Tyler to stay with him and an argument ensues during which Tyler receives a text that makes him leave the house in secret. When Dave finally goes looking for him, he only finds a note in his room with Maddie's number. Milton keeps rushing Laura because the shelter is filling up, so they need to be there soon. When Laura explains Tyler is gone, Milton uses the boy's phone number to track the location with special software and finds him at the skate park. It turns out Tyler is there with Maddie, who is very nervous and scared because her parents left. Tyler promises that he isn't like his dad and will never leave her alone. Suddenly, a loud cry is heard and huge flocks of birds appear in the sky, which is another sign of the reckoning. People in the park run in panic and soon the roads are filled with families trying to leave town. Dave gets stuck in a giant traffic jam, but when he sees the birds fly by, he leaves the car and continues the search on foot. At the gate, workers are checking the systems when they hear some strange sounds. A monster suddenly appears and begins attacking one of the men. Garrett runs away while the other soldiers open fire, but it seems ordinary bullets don't harm the beast. Moments later, Dave finally finds Tyler and Maddie right before the emergency sirens start ringing through the whole city. Luckily Laura shows up with Milton and they take the three of them away in Milton's car. There is around an hour left before the eclipse, and the city is in complete chaos. With people trying to escape, there's a traffic jam on every road. The family gets stuck for a while and sees cultists walking around the cars, scaring drivers with their painted faces and their conviction that the end is coming. When Milton finally sees an opening, he drives as fast as he can and manages to get the family to the shelter. Unfortunately there's chaos here too with lots of people begging for a place inside while the military says that only women and children are allowed. Dave tells Tyler to go with Laura and Maddie into the shelter, but after stepping inside, Tyler regrets it and runs back to his father saying he would never leave him behind. The women follow him out and at that moment the scoreboard announces that the shelter is completely filled. The group rushes back to the car while discussing options. Dave wants to go to Ted's hideout in the desert while Milton suggests hiding at the school because it's closer and it has a basement. They soon get stuck in another Trather jam, so they end up getting out of the car as an earthquake hits the area and the eclipse begins. With the world falling into darkness, the monsters start making their way out to attack. They immediately take over the city and start killing without mercy just like it happened 15 years ago. Dave insists they should leave the city and wants to drive, but Nuffin gets angry because this is his car and he knows how to save everyone. An argument ensues and punches are thrown, but the fight is interrupted when a flying monster dives in and takes Milton away. While Laura screams, Dave shoves her into the car and he takes over the wheel to finally take his family out of the city. As they drive along the canal, they discuss theories about the origin of the monsters, wondering if they were sent by God or not. Eventually the car starts to run out of gas, and Dave wants to find a replacement for it. He parks next to a bunch of abandoned cars and begins checking inside to discover there are bodies in them. When he finally finds an empty one, he gets inside, only for the driver hidden in the back seat to pull him down as he reveals there's a monster nearby. 
It keeps searching around the vehicles for more victims, and when it passes near the two men, thankfully it doesn't see them and keeps going. Then the monster finds one of the bodies and begins eating it. So very carefully and quietly Dave starts rolling the car back to Laura and the kids. Now both cars are standing side by side, so Laura and the kids try to pass from one car to another. They're very quiet about it, but the monster still notices them and comes after them. The old man gets out of the car and sprinkles the beast with salt, but this only stops the monster for a moment and then it jumps on the man to start devouring him. The family uses this distraction to finally drive away from the area, taking an abandoned road in the mountains while hordes of monsters flock to the city from all sides. Eventually they finally make it to Ted's hideout, which is a truly concrete bunker. The doors are closed and there are cameras on the roof, but nobody comes out when the family begins yelling and hitting the door, begging to be allowed inside. What they don't know is that Ted is sitting at his computer, watching them on the cameras while someone is pointing a gun at his head. At that moment, a horde of monsters appears in the mountains and begins rushing to the shelter. As the family panics, Dade grabs a tire iron to protect his loved ones, but then the door of the bunker finally opens and they rush inside. The family meets with Ted and his wife Stella, but they're also surprised to find Gareth. Apparently his father used to be war buddies with Ted and he got separated from his unit, so he came here to ask for help. David notices Garrett has a gun, which makes him suspicious. Then the group shares a meal but they can't help noticing on the monitors how the monsters are trying to smash the door, making everyone nervous. Using the radio is also useless because they can only hear screams. Maddie asks how the monsters sense them, and Garrett explains they react to light and heat, but he wonders if they see people's souls. He also shares the story about how he survived the first judgment day. Back then he worked at a refinery, and when the monsters poured in there, he managed to dive into a pond of salty mud. He buried himself and had to listen to the monsters killing all his colleagues and friends. While Garrett is distracted by his storytelling, Ted signals Dave to grab and hide a knife, unaware that outside, a centipede like monsters crawling into a small hole in the mesh covering the window. Then Garrett announces he'll be on watch duty first, so Ted invites the others to stay and play cards instead of sleeping, looking meaningfully at Dave. However, Garrett notices the gesture and pulls the gun out of its holster, forcing Dave to put down the knife as he explains that Ted had been against allowing him to stay. It was Stella who had taken pity on him. He survived the first time and he's determined to survive again no matter the cost. Suddenly Tyler throws himself at Garrett to try to take the gun but Garrett just pushes him away. An argument ensues but Maddie interrupts it by pointing out they can't hear the monsters anymore. Then the centipede-like monster jumps out of the wall and bites Stella. While Ted rips the creature off his wife's neck and pours salt on it, Dave punches Garrett to take his gun and tries to shoot the creature. The little monster dodges all the bullets, but Maddie manages to kill it with a knife. Afterward they tie up Garrett and try to stop Stella's bleeding, but they'll need proper medical care. At that moment they notice on the monitor that a huge beast is repeatedly hitting the front door, trying to get in. Dave says they should leave, but Ted doesn't want to go out, saying his wife won't survive outside. Stella wants him to go and reminds him of the underground passage under the bunker, which leads to the mountains. Garrett says he has a car with a full tank and he can take everyone to the gate, and the group doesn't know if they're leaving him until Garrett points out that it's beneficial for him to help them. They decide to leave, but first Ted reveals he has a whole arsenal of weapons and everyone arms themselves. While the group enters the tunnel, Dave opens the front door and blows up the first beast that comes through before joining the others. Once the tunnel is properly closed, they go outside and notice Stella is having trouble walking because she's starting to transform into a beast too. Later they're walking down a road when Tyler spots a monster just standing there. The beast seems to be dead, so Maddie tries to touch it, only for Tyler to stop her. When she turns around, a long tentacle comes out of a hole in the ground and grabs her legs, trying to drag her away. As Maddie screams wildly, Tyler and Dave hold her back, and Laura shoots at the tentacle to make it retrieve. Once Maddie is free, the group runs away, and Garrett convinces Dave to untie him so he can help in case of another attack. What the others don't know it's that Dave is hiding an injury on his arm. Sometime later they make it to the top of the mountain and see the city is burning. When they find Garrett's car, they are devastated to see it won't start. At that moment monsters appear on top of the mountain and begin rushing in their direction, so Garrett desperately tries to start the engine again while Stella takes Ted's gun to end things for herself before she finishes transforming. Ted immediately fights her until he takes the gun back and begs her to get in the car, but Dave knows there's no hope and drags Ted back. Stella waits for the monsters to arrive, and they quickly eat her. Garrett finally manages to start the car and the group escapes, leaving the monsters behind. On the way, they pick up a radio signal and hear that almost all the shelters couldn't withstand the onslaught and were ruined. Eventually they arrive at the gate but nobody answers the radio, not to mention the door is open. The group carefully makes their way inside and discovers there's no power. So Garrett and Dave decide to fix it while the others go to look for a first aid kit because they've discovered that Ted has a wound in his back. The others take care of Ted while Dave restores electricity, and Garrett explains that the gate was prepared for a second invasion and tons of salt water had been pumped in, but the hole was too deep. Once the power is working again, Dave and Garrett begin making their way back, but suddenly Garrett feels blood dripping on his hand and looks up to find a body at the same time something in the darkness roars. 
The duo rushes back to the group to discuss their options since there are two hours left until the end of the eclipse, and Garrett offers to hide in a chemical warehouse because its doors are blast-proof. The moment they leave the medical bay, a transformed human attacks Garrett, who fights together with Dave to deal with it. They defeat the beast, but the noise they made has gotten the attention of more monsters. Terrified, Garrett quickly runs through a door and closes it behind him, leaving everyone behind. Then he gives himself some kind of injection to start fighting back the transformation. Dave takes his family to another room and notices there are dispersal lines there, which means the tank is on the other side of the wall. This gives him an idea for a plan. He'll funnel the salt water through the tank pipes to keep the monsters out. Before he leaves, Laura kisses him. At that moment the door breaks, so the family runs away. Dave makes his way through the ventilation, noticing a monster devouring its prey in the room. When he reaches the tank, he tries to be very quiet as he opens the faucet and water begins to fill the containers. Then Dave climbs back, but the monster senses him and starts to chase him, grabbing his leg. As Dave fights back, he sprinkles it with salt, causing the monster to crumble to dust. Meanwhile the others find themselves surrounded by monsters, and Tyler opens fire on them. Suddenly Dave's voice is heard from the loudspeaker asking them to turn on the fire alarm. The monsters are getting closer, so Ted tells Tyler to protect the family before going after the monsters with an axe, but several beasts jump on him at once and kill him quickly. Tyler keeps on shooting only to run out of ammo, so he turns on the fire alarm, causing salt water to start falling all over the monsters, making them crumble into dust while they squeal in pain. At that moment the eclipse ends and all monsters begin going back to their realm through the gate, causing another earthquake. Laura and the children try to get moving too only to come across Garrett, who is losing his mind to the transformation. He shoots Tyler and hits them on the shoulder, but before he can shoot again, Dave appears behind him and hits Garrett in the head with a fire extinguisher. While Dave reunites with his family, a huge monster appears from below and it lunges at Garrett, swallowing him whole. The family runs into the medical unit and makes a salty mixture in a cylinder, which they throw at the monster as soon as it kicks down the door, instantly killing it. Afterward the family goes outside and finds the world has been utterly destroyed, but now they're ready to start rebuilding again. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.